Well, good morning. Let's uh, do a, a practice here of our song again. Uh, I think everyone's doing well, but uh, Ryan's going to uh, play it, and I don't know where my drum is. So, um, actually, it's all the way in the back. So, uh, okay, it's on, the, on that. Uh, ask best guy Larry to help you. Um, okay, this is the last, it's, it's in your bulletin, and it's in hymn uh, 833. It's not going to be on the screens because we're just doing a practice this morning. So if you want to, um, fantastic. All right, hurry up. All right, thanks. Okay. 
Great. All right, Ryan, why don't you get started? And you're going to be the leader? Okay. Through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness. that you could join us today. Um, I uh, feel like there was a couple of things that uh, going on, but you know what? Let's uh, stand and greet those folks around us as we prepare for worship. The one announcement I do see right here before service is um, uh, Robert Wagner. He was the son of Frank and Norma Wagner, and I know some of you may know that name. And he passed away um, just recently in Florida, and his uh, funeral service, memorial service, will be later in October, I believe is um, 
what I was told. So anyway, we will be praying for the family of uh, Robert uh, Wagner as uh, they mourn his loss. So let's begin, though, now with our opening hymn. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise and the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for each and every one of you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
And let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 5. Announce this to the descendants of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives us autumn and spring rains in season, who assures us of regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Among my people are the wicked who lie in wait, like men who snare birds, and like those who set traps to catch people. Like cages full of birds, their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful, and have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not seek justice. They do not promise the case of the fatherless. They do not defend the just cause of the poor. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies, the priests rule by their own authority, and my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants and promise, having no hope and without God in the world. 
But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on a foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able. Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The, apostle, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. He divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish, and those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn.
to my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord my God. Amen. Can you open up that first slide um, and then um, go ahead and open up the next or do the next one. So we're at eighth week of our summer Bible reading program. Um, uh, I didn't check this morning, but last week um, we have read 38 books of the Bible collectively at a, as a congregation, and that's really good. We are now you know, over halfway through the program, and we're a little over halfway through uh, reading all the books of the Bible. And so I think that's really great. I'm really, uh, I congratulate all of our reading because uh, we just praise God for that because that's, uh, that was part of my goal. So our theme, of course, for July, the Bible is a message from God. And the, you know, two questions I, you know, one is, uh, do you really, Want to hear what the message is from God, or would you rather just listen to what your social media feed is telling you? And then the other question is, um, actually somebody asked me recently, which was very appropriate for this summer Bible reading program, is how is a specific Bible passage that you have recently read in this summer Bible, Bible reading program, how is it affecting you? In, in, in what way? Okay, how is it impacting you? So just kind of mull over that, uh, if you will. So of course, one of the reasons that uh, when we talk about a message from God and about how some people don't want to hear it, uh, one of the reasons that, uh, of course, people don't want to hear what God has to say is because they don't want, they want to live the way where they want to live, and that is contrary to the way God's word is, and so they don't want to hear what God's word has to say. Um, we see here in Romans, um, Romans chapter 1, a couple of verses here. I mean, uh, for although uh, Rome, Paul again writing to the Christians in Rome, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Now, Paul, one of the, uh, I'll say one of the sins that Paul was uh, talking about was sexual immorality, uh, which... Uh, if you re ever read uh, the history of the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire gave our life today a lot of things, okay? Good and bad, all right? That's just how it was. And so, but Paul is also talking not just about sexually immoral sins. He's talking about all kinds of sins that people are doing, okay? 
and that people uh, chose to bow down and worship the things that were created as opposed to the creator who created them. Now, maybe you're not inclined to bow down to your dog or maybe you buy an eagle or some oddball thing like that and you're like, you know, you, you, you might not worship it, okay? But even us Americans who don't, may not do those things, all right, we still do fear, love, and trust in things that aren't always God, okay? Think about, you know, do you, do you just rest peaceful at night knowing that all of your financial affairs are in order? Do you just sleep well and, and feel better knowing that, uh, you know, the medical care that you have is all taken care of and that everything is good? And you know what? And there's nothing wrong with concerning yourself with those things because by all means, God gives all the things to us to manage, manage well. But if we manage them such that we fear, love, and trust that. Remember a while back, I just, I, I don't have the, the lectionary, but I mean, I do have a Bible. Actually, the hymnal will be a better example. Remember when I put the hymnal up some months back, okay? And we talked about, well, what if this was my God? And you look at me and you say, that's dumb, pastor. I'm not going to bow down to a book. No, but if you fear, love, and trust in this, okay, this is a ridiculous example, but if you fear love and trust in it more than you do God, well, then it isn't ridiculous, all right? And there even, okay, this is the Holy Bible. English Standard Version, that's what we use. I mean, that's what we use mostly. There are some people that even will take the Bible, and uh, in Ghana we saw this, and that's not unique to Ghana, okay? Don't just be like those dumb Africans, okay? Because Americans, we're just as bad, all right? But they would take it and they would like, uh, I remember one of the pastors, uh, the, actually the former head pastor of the Lutheran church there, he was t preaching once and he said, you don't take your Bible and you put it under your pillow and assume that that is how you ingest God's word. Okay, and now maybe you think that's ridiculous, okay? He also said, you don't need to take this Bible and bury it in the cornerstone of the new church that you're building. How many people have done that in America? All right. Do we have a cornerstone here? There's a Bible buried in it at this church. Do we know? I, I mean, I'm just saying, okay, and that, that pastor was correct in saying that. That the same with us, though, okay? We can, we can even elevate the Bible such that, well, we don't really read it, but we elevate it so, you know, high and mighty, and that's, that's great that there's respect for it, okay? But... When, when, when the, you know, the hymnal or your dog or your financial affairs or whatever becomes the thing that you fear, love, and trust in most, then that is the way that Martin Luther described it, is that he says that's, that's a description of your God. So in the large catechism, the first commandment, go to the next slide, okay? I'm sorry that it's kind of small. I realize that now. Uh, but if you squint, it'll be just perfect, okay? What does it mean to have a God or what is God? A God means that from which we are to expect all good and to which we are to take refuge in all distress. So that to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in him from the whole heart. As I have often said, Martin Luther writes, that the confidence and faith of the heart alone make both God and, and an idol. If your faith and trust be right, then your God also true. Then on the other hand, if your trust be false and wrong, then you have not the true God. For these two belong together, faith and God. That now I say upon which you set your heart and put your trust is properly your God. All right, and then Paul here in Romans chapter 1, here in kind of the end of, of this uh, chapter here. Uh, furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, God gave them over to these people to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are all full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanders, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of those who practice them. So I don't know if you heard that bit there, what Paul was saying at the end of Romans chapter one here, 
that God gave them over to a debased mind, a wicked mind, to do what ought not to be done. God let them go to do whatever they wanted to do. Okay, now if anybody ever thinks, oh, well, that sounds great. Well, is it? Is it good when God lets you go? When he stops caring for you? When he stops, when he just lets you do whatever you want? When he does that, it's not like, okay, well, you can just kind of, you know, do that and come here. Because Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 6, about this idea of, can I just keep on sinning and living the way I want to live and know that God's grace will cover all of my sins? Well, it's true that God's grace does cover all of your sins, but when you consistently live this way, consistently, persistently, okay, that's the key word, then... That's, that's where the problem comes in, okay? Paul says no, that, uh, um, you know, you don't just uh, go off and I'll just live this way and who cares what, what God says. I'll just come back and say I'm sorry. And I mean, is that really how God wants you to live? That's not, that's, God gave us the Ten Commandments. He gave us his holy word so that we would know how to live and how we should live that way, not according to some other you know, whatever, whatever sets you free. I mean, whatever sets, you know, whatever makes you happy, okay? They go and they can do whatever they want to do. And, and so therefore God gave them up uh, to a lust, uh, in the, uh, up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring another translation of their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than creator. All right. Now, let me read you here another, another section here from part of our reading from today, from Jeremiah chapter 5, when uh, God was speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. Okay, it's chapter 5, beginning at verse 20. Announce this to the house of Jacob, God says, and proclaim it to Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made a sand boundary for the sea and an everlasting barrier or it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone astray. They do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives the autumn and spring rains in a season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. And because the people just kept doing what shouldn't have been done. All right. Um, and I'm sorry if it seems like this morning's message, I'm just thinking, holy moly, let's find some gospel here and have some positive good news about this, okay? Because there is good news about it, all right? Um, but, all, but both are important, okay? If you only have a diet of um, gospel, if you only have a diet of delicious, wonderful things like ice cream, that's great, okay? But you will get sick, right? You know, if you eat too much ice cream, you're going to get sick, all right? And um, you do need some vegetables now and then, all right? Even celery, which, I mean, some people eat, so... Um, but, you know, you need vegetables and you need a variety of foods, okay, in order to keep you healthy and strong. The same with the word. We need a variety here and we need the two main categories of food, which is the law and the gospel. Because the law, God's law, shows us what God's standards are and what he expects of us and he wants from us, okay? Not just uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, put a burden on their back and make them miserable and so they hate their lives forever, all right? Nowhere in Scripture does God say he's going to force people, twist your arm, and make you become a Christian, make you become a follower of Jesus, okay? He wants you to come. He invites you to come because he loves you so much because he wants you to be with him. And then he gives us that, and then he gives us his gospel, which shows us what God is doing for us through the personal work of Jesus because we cannot measure up to the standards that God has given us. All right, uh, go on to Psalm 139. Uh, King David wrote this, where shall I go from your spirit and uh, where or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. 
I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light be around, about me at night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. I love this, this part of this psalm because anytime we start talking about what what are how we measure up to God's law and what, you know, the people of, say, in the days of Jeremiah who were not looking to God, they were looking to everything else around them, that, you know, God is still with us, all right? He's still present among us in spite of what we may or may not want or desire, all right? Um, Isaiah talks about the, the, the Messiah will be named Emmanuel. All throughout the Old Testament, there are, uh, and particularly the minor, uh, pro the prophets, you know, the Isaiah and Jeremiah, but also the shorter books called the minor prophets, they're all prophesying that, that gospel message, that hope that the people are looking for. Sure, they are getting the, the law because that's what God also told them that they needed to share. But it gives them that good news, that reminder that Jesus, the Messiah, Emmanuel, which means God with us. All right? Not God far, far away. Not God in Tahiti. God with us in Des Plaines, Illinois. God with us. Because he loves us. Because he wants to be with us. He wants us to come to him, confess our sins, and receive his gracious forgiveness. And then he wants to shower on us the joy and the peace that he so freely gives. God gives the Israelites through the Moses the opportunity to come to him every day. Uh, here, uh, let's uh, go to that next slide then. Again, I'm sorry that it's really small. Karen told me how big font to use, and I obviously didn't listen to her, so I'm sorry about that. All right, but here, uh, uh, God speaking through Moses, he said, See, I've, I've said before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have said it before you, life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and the length of days. From Deuteronomy chapter 30, some various verses in Deuteronomy chapter 30. God wants us to choose life, to choose him, because he is the source of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one goes and gets to heaven throughout without Jesus. And he wants us to come. He encouraged the Israelites to choose life. That's life in Christ, okay? That's what he, what he, what he wants from us, all right? And we see, though, a little later here in our reading from Jeremiah chapter 5, uh, let me, let me uh, jump back here to verse 23. But these people have stubborn, rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives autumn and spring rains in season, assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Verse 26, among my people are wicked men who lie in wait like men who snare um, birds and like those who set traps to catch men. Cages full of birds, their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful, have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not plead the case of the fatherless to win it. They do not defend the rights of the poor. Verse 29, then Jeremiah, uh, God asking the people through Jeremiah, should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets, the prophets prophesy lies the priests rule by their own authority, and my people have it this way, and my people love it this way, but what will you do in the end? Uh, to me, that's a very astounding, okay? Uh, the scriptures are very clear about the job of the priest and the preacher of preaching and teaching only what God says, okay? If you ever hear me say, well, I think this is what we should do, or my idea is really great, we really should go this direction, then you need to, you know, smack me upside the head and say, listen, Labu, we don't do this, okay? We follow God's word. Because that's what it is, okay? If you, if you hear some preacher say that, then you need to look and see what the scripture says about that in order to verify if what they're saying is true. That's what... 
That's how it works, all right? And you know that, okay? And I encourage you to continue to do that, okay? Because, but it's appalling because even in Jeremiah's day, there were preachers that were just kind of saying what sounded good to the people. Well, they thought this sounded good and, and it was better, so therefore we'll just say the, 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 the smooth words is one of the translations, one of the verses says, talking about words that, that go down like, you know, um, like delicious morsels that we swallow down. And it's appalling because that is not what God's called people, preachers and priests to do. He's called them to be the faithful uh, ministers of the word, to share the word, to uh, speak the truth of God's word to the people, to encourage the people with God's word so that they will then seek God and they will want to come to him day and night. All right? But God also asks you to do the same. He asks you also to be Christ bearers for, uh, for him so that when you go out and you're in your respective work and other environments, they, that people will see something different in you and they will want to give glory to God, our Heavenly Father. Paul reminds us in, uh, in Romans chapter 3 that everybody has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But in the next verse, all every person is justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation, as a substitution by his blood to be received by faith. And he does that so willingly for us. We didn't do anything. The only thing you and I did was screw up and disobey God's commandments. We confess our sins, though, and receive God's gracious forgiveness, and God forgives us. Go to the next slide there. So how does that happen? Ephesians chapter uh, um, 2, it is by the grace of God that you have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And it's not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of work so that no one would boast. And then in John 14, Jesus even uh, says this. He, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That we, we receive God's grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, because he loves us so much. You didn't have to do anything. You know, I always think about that, that statement. I always think about that in relation to communion, okay? What on earth did you do this morning before you came to church and then when you walked through into this building and walked into this sanctuary, okay? What on earth have you done on all that morning to prepare to receive Christ's body and blood in communion? I mean, some people pray or maybe they kind of meditate and think about the, the what's happening, okay? But I use that example because... This is a free gift that God freely gives to you because he loves you, because he wants you to have it, to be strengthened in your faith and to be reminded of how much he loves you. Go uh, to our, our next slide there. God wants you to come to him. He wants to be with you all of the time. He wants you to come to him. He wants to spend time with you. That's why, you know, I encourage Bible reading and praying so much. Because that's how we, you know, that's how we know for sure what's going on with God. That, that's why we can talk with God and we can pray with God and we can read his word and listen to his word and he can teach us his word and, and, and help us grow. Because he loves us, he wants us. So just as, you know, as you taught your children how to do certain things and to engage with certain things, God does the same with us because he loves you. Because he wants you to live in his peace and his joy. So that you will, so that, you know, you'll well up into like a, a spring of water welling up into eternal life that, that then pours out of you and that uh, then others will get to see something amazingly different in you. That you can then seek Jesus day in and day out and know that he hears you. Isaiah says that, and I say it, I've, I've said it often near the end of my sermons that, you know, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Seek Jesus while he is near. While he is always near. Call upon him and he will hear you. He will hear. He will listen. He will guide you and lead you in the way you should go. For to you, O Lord, let us lift up our souls. 
To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found in the one true faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, please rise as you're able as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the God of this Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who is for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was inspired by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was taken in, and was crucified also for us in the Holy He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in my holy Christian Catholic Church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Lord God, you give us your word so that we have words to pray for all people according to their needs. Today we pray using Psalm 20. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You give us pastors and teachers to point us to you, to help us see the truth of your holy word. We therefore pray for Pastor Matt Harrison our synodical president, Pastor Alan Buss, our district president, Pastor Carl Fay, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in our area. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, also for the men and women serving our local congregation and the board of elders. Bless them with your spirit as they lead and guide our congregation in a way that will glorify you and will build up our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You give us opportunity every day to read or listen to the promises that you have written down for our instruction and in learning. Encourage us to fill up with your truth every day. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the opportunity you give our congregation to serve you by serving our neighbors through the Connecting Point Cafe and the Food Pantry. May these ministries glorify you and build up our neighborhood. Lord, in your mercy. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You give us leaders for the city, state, and nation who serve us uh, and serve you. We therefore pray for President Biden, Vice President Harris, the men in the House of Representatives, men and women of the Senate, the Supreme Court Justices, Illinois Governor Pritzker, and Des Plaines Mayor Goskowski. May each of these leaders rule us in your stead with wisdom and understanding that truth and justice may prevail in our land and lawless, lawlessness may be kept at bay. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we, Lord, pray for our citizens who serve uh, you by serving us in uh, a variety of ways including the police department, the fire department, and all first responders. Encourage these folks daily in their work. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for the men and women you've called to serve our country in the various branches of the armed forces. Strengthen and encourage them as they serve where you have called them. Lord, in your mercy. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. We thank you for the opportunity you give us each day, or rather give us specifically today, dear Lord, to receive from you your body and blood and holy communion. May we be reminded that this communion strengthens us uh, in our faith and our steadfastness and love towards you and one another. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
when we are weary and worn, burdened and exhausted, please remind us that we will only find true, lasting peace in you alone. Help us regularly to rest in you alone. We pray for our family members and friends who are struggling with their health and well-being, um, including Keith, Diane, Marie, Esther, Eugene, and Hannah Laura, Irma, Jean, Irene, Walter, Marion, Eunice, Elaine, Phil and Susan, John and Carol, Marion, Debbie, Desi, Diana, and Carol. We pray that you would continue to heal these folks and strengthen them according to your will and in your time. Lord, in your mercy. We also uh, celebrate uh, those cele uh, celebrating a birthday, including Nathan. We praise and thank you for another year of life you've granted to him. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for the family of Robert Wagner. We pray that you would comfort them and guide them through this uh, um, sad time. Help them, Lord, as they mourn through this process. May they keep their eyes fixed on you. Lord, in your mercy. Surely good follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our justice, as we forgive those. Catechism explains Holy Communion this way. It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us about the importance of Holy Communion being a fellowship meal. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one bread. As fellow believers in Jesus Christ, when we eat and drink of the body and blood in Holy Communion, then we are participating together as the body of Christ. We're participating in that one holy Christian and apostolic church. As you prepare to come forward to receive communion, it's important to understand why and what we're doing in Holy Communion. You might wonder what Holy Communion is such an important event uh, that Jesus tells us to do. Whoever receives this sacrament worthily, fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine at our training. But that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared for the words for you require all hearts to believe. If you have any questions, please uh, talk with me after the service. Uh, but if uh, you still have some questions and doubts, you can just come forward and cross your arms over your chest and receive a blessing from God's word. We'll continue now with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us all and on all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him all our sins, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we long to magnify your glorious name before evermore praising you and singing, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In these days you have poured out your spirit on your church that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Pour out your spirit upon uh, your gathered people that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your son we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
accept you for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you the one true faith and the life of our life. Our enemy. Congregation, please rise for our post meeting canticle. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage. 
that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. You know it's Ryan that's really carrying this song and not this thing, okay? So uh, let's have our closing, our closing hymn here. <laughs> And God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Then God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Share the good news and set us free. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, God is calling word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Throughout the world, go and baptize. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Standing steadfast. Inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. All right. I couldn't remember if there's another verse. Sorry. Thank you, Ryan. You did a great job. So... I appreciate his help there. Okay, um, just a couple announcements. I forgot this last week, but the Northern Illinois District um, um, Convention, the 61st Convention, is going to be held next year, March, of uh, first weekend in March of 2025 over at Concordia University of Chicago. And every congregation is invited to participate um, in this um, district convention, okay? Now, as a congregation, we're invited to nominate um, a man to serve as the district president, the vice president, and the circuit visitor, which the elders and I and the board of managers are working on, and we're compiling, kind of considering that. We're all, okay. And so we're, of course, you're going to send your pastor, but they're all, the district also invites um, a lay delegate and an alternate lay delegate and an advisory delegate and an alternate advisory delegate. So I'm asking for at least three, maybe four people to be considered for these positions, okay? Really only three would need to go. So the, I mean, really, it would, yeah, it would just be me and then like the lay delegate and the advisory delegate, okay? So there'll be me and two people that would need to go. So I would ask that you pray about it um, and uh, um, as a way to kind of learn about the district and what we're doing and um, you know what ministries and services they want to do in the future and how they're serving Northern Illinois District. 
And so uh, please uh, consider, I did put something in the messenger, uh, but please consider that uh, as an option, okay? Um, also, um, this is a German book, okay? I can read German, I can't remember what these words say, okay? Um, but that's okay. But I know some of you can. I found a box that have German, and then there's also some English, old English books. Uh, I say old English because it's written in a very similar script as the old German is. So some people feel warm and fuzzy when they see this, okay? And I want you to be blessed with as many of the books that are, that are sitting in the fellowship hall. Uh, there's a box. It's labeled very clearly, okay? I wrote free fun old German and English books, because what's not fun about old German and English books? Okay, if you have a negative thing to say, don't say it, okay? So you can also say something positive, okay? Or if you're like, I know somebody who likes fun old German and English books, so they're, they're there, okay? Um, anyway, I'm just, we're trying to clean out, because you know what, the pastor's office for some reason, and I don't know why, why is the pastor's office like this black hole vortex? Everything dumps in there, and then next thing you know, 57 years have gone by, and nobody remembers it anymore. And, you know, 20 years in, they're like, I wonder what ever happened to those books. Oh, they vanished in the pastor vortex, and, uh, and then you never see them again. So I'm trying to resurrect some of them. It's kind of hard pulling them out of the vortex. But anyway, so uh, look them up, you know, and, and uh, please take some as you're able. Please do prayerfully consider how you can help and serve. I'm going to go, so I'll be a fun companion at the Northern Illinois District Convention. And if two other people want to join me, that would be great. So, yes. Cheryl Barron's, oh yes, on this coming, this coming Saturday, Cheryl Barron's uh, memorial service is this Saturday. Pastor Mao will be leading that, conducting that funeral visitation, that funeral service, um, but it's going to be here, right? And then, and then there'll be a reception afterwards. Is the visitation also here? Well, it was a memorial. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, everybody does something different, so I don't assume anything, so, Okay. Great. So her funeral will be this coming Saturday here at Emmanuel. Pastor Mao will be conducting that um, service. So, all right, thanks for reminding me about that. Okay. Anything else? Um, please join us for uh, Bible class. I have a short video. It's about three minutes long. It pertains to the theme of our summer, our July summer Bible reading program, which is the message, the Bible is a message from God or some equivalent to that. And, um, and so I want you to come and watch. It's a fun little video as you're able. So yeah, nothing else? Nope. All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.